Hevel is one of several cashed up Chinese car makers seeking sales success in Australia, alongside the SEG Group's LDV and MG nameplates. Given our market is already among the most crowded in the world, that's no easy task. But vehicles such as Hevel's flagship SUV, the H9, are at the very least worth your attention. This updated model rectifies some issues we had with the previous version, and while it still won't sell in volume, it'll help move the dial towards broader acceptance. Of course, the key is convincing people that such an unknown quantity is worthy of trust. If you can have a low-grade Hyundai Santa Fe, Kia Sorento, or a rugged diesel Mitsubishi Page Aerosport, Ishizum UX, for similar money, why roll the dice on Hevel? Same goes for the LDV D90. Well perception and reality often don't align. Remember when the Korean brands were a laughing stock? Some of our more experienced readers may even remember the time when Australians mocked Japanese cars, too. The MY18 Hovel H9's improvements have been engineered because of local feedback. The company has also cut the price as you can read here to $41,990 for the Lux version and $45,990 for the Ultra. Those prices are drive away, and spec for spec much more suitable than before. First the engine. There's still no diesel, and don't hold your breath. There'll be a petrol electric hybrid offering before that happens. For now there's a 2.0 litre turbocharged petrol 4 but uprated to 180 kilowatts, was 160 kilowatts, and 350 newton meters, was 324 newton meters, from 1800 revolutions per minute thanks to a higher compression ratio of 10.0 colon 1. Those outputs compare to a Kia Sorento 3.5 V6's 206 kilowatts slash 336 newton meters, and while there's no big slab of diesel torque, Hevel still achieved a 2,500 kg brake trailer tow rating. We also matched its fuel use claim of 10.9 liters slash 100 km, 10% higher than a Jeep Grand Cherokee 3.6s. The engine is now matched to a new 8-speed automatic gearbox made again by German Maestro's ZF, supplier to BMW and Land Rover, and not cheap with manual, sports and paddle shifter modes, in place of the old six-speeder. The new driver train actually does a decent job. The body on frame H9 is a heavy beast at 2,230 kg curb, but we got to 100 km per hour in under 10 seconds. It's relatively responsive, has a strong mid-range, and good levels of refinement. That better ratio spread also helps low speed pickup. While the H9 is ostensibly pitched as a family crossover, it's actually constructed like a Page Aerosport or Ford Everest. Its body on frame rather than monocoque, has an Eaton locking rear diff, and low range gearing with a Borg Warner transfer case. This means that despite the relatively sophisticated double wishbone front and multi-link rear suspension, the Hevel doesn't have the tied down body control on the straight ahead, or against cornering loads, of a car based crossover. Gotta have plenty of axle articulation built in, too. The softer sidewall Kumho road tires, in place of the old Coopers, on small 18 inch rims do give the car a fairly comfortable ride over smaller corrugations. It feels more at home on gravel than tarmac, actually while the low-resistance hydraulic steering makes turning in the city very simple. 